Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we're still discussing uh, limits in the L infinity space. Okay, so now what I want to show you basically is that if I have a sequence of sequences in L infinity, so uh, let's say we have a sequence S, which is S1, S2, S3, etc. And all of these terms, uh, so all of these terms of this sequence, the SIs, are elements of L infinity. And the L infinity is either a real or complex uh, L infinity space. So um, these sequences, them, these, L, these terms of this sequence are themselves sequences. So if I write them out, we have S1 is equal to X11, X1, two, and I'm using the same notation as in the previous video. So the superscript denotes that it's the first uh, sequence in this sequence up here, in the meta sequence, if you like. And uh, the subscript denotes what term it is in this sequence. So X1, 3, X1, 4, X1, 5, etc. And then you have a next, your next term, which is S2, which is X21, uh, X22 x23, x24, x25, and it is worth writing this out, so I will just spend a little bit of time making this picture. s3, which is x31, x32, otherwise it becomes very easy to forget that these terms of this sequence are in fact sequences themselves. So x33, x34, x35, with that picture sitting in front of you, you can't possibly forget. Right, okay, so let's now uh, suppose, what we want to prove in this video is that even if this has a pointwise limit, then that limit might not necessarily be what it converges to in d-infinity. It might not, well, sorry, no, if it converges in d-infinity, it does converge to its pointwise limit. However, if it converges to, a, if you've got a sequence of sequences which does have a pointwise limit, it doesn't necessarily have a convergent limit in d infinity. But the what I want to stress is that it does not convert, it cannot converge to anything else in d infinity. If it doesn't converge to its pointwise limit, then it doesn't converge at all. Uh, so if it does converge in our L infinity metric space with our d infinity metric, so this metric space, then it converges to its pointwise limit. So if you have a sequence of sequences which converges in here, then it converges to its pointwise limit. No buts. Well, that's what we proved in the previous video. However, and you can construct sequence of sequences, uh, you know, these sequences are all in L infinity, which will not converge in this metric space, even though they have a pointwise limit. That's what I'm trying to prove in this video. So, let's suppose that this, these sequences, this sequence of sequences does have a pointwise limit, i.e., uh, if we take, if we split this up into lots of sequences of real or complex numbers, so we take these pointwise limits, so we're looking at the sequence of first terms now, so we've made a new sequence, which is, uh, we start off with all the, um, we start off with the first term of the first sequence, we then go to the second, uh, the second sequence, but still the first term, so we take all the first terms of all of these sequences, so we go on, we have S4 down here, we take the first term of its sequence, and that forms a sequence of real or complex numbers. Now, if it has a pointwise limit, it means that this sequence of real numbers is convergent. So let's say it converges to L1, okay? Right. Similarly, let's say that the sequence of second terms converges to L2. So we're saying basically that all of these pointwise sequences, so all of these termwise sequences, you might like to call them, uh, they do converge. They are convergent sequences of real numbers. So all of these sequences here, they converge, okay? And we get some great big sequence here of real or complex numbers. So let's call this sequence L. L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7, etc. And you go on and on. And you calculate the limit for all of these term-wise sequences, and you put them all together to make a sequence of real or complex numbers. Right. So, now what I want to show you is that this isn't necessarily, it does not imply, the existence of this pointwise uh, limit does not imply that this, is actually, this sequence of sequences actually converges in this metric space. Okay, uh, and note that it wasn't, if you create a sequence of arbitrary sequences, then it's not 
it's not just trivial that it will have a point-wise limit. It's, you're going to have to pick your sequences very carefully if you want them to have a point-wise limit. So what we're saying is that having a d-infinity limit is even more extreme than having a point-wise limit. It's even the smaller set of sequences of sequences which have a d-infinity metric, a d-infinity limit, than have a point-wise limit. Okay, right. So uh, let's think about what it means for these term-wise sequences to converge to this value here. It means that you give me any epsilon for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a point, there exists a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, um, so, uh, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the uh, absolute value, let's say, or the modulus, if these are complex numbers, are of x... Uh, where should we have it? X little n, uh, and we'll put an i there because we're doing an arbitrary term y sequence. Minus li is less than epsilon. So basically, let me explain what I mean here. So you pick an arbitrary term y sequence. So you pick the ith term y sequence, and that's the one we're interested in. That's the one we're questioning. Uh, what does it mean uh, for this to converge? So this is the, uh, oh dear, what have I done there? The fifth one. So you pick an arbitrary ith term y sequence. What does it mean for that ith term y sequence to converge? It means that for whatever epsilon you give me, there must exist some, let's call it, shall we call it big N i, to denote that it's the big N corresponding to the ith sequence, such that if little n is beyond big N i, so if you pick any term, let's say x little n i down here. So if you pick any term beyond that big N i in this uh, point, in this term-wise sequence here, and you ask how far, what's its modulus, uh, what's the modulus of its difference from L uh, L i, so the limit of this term y, of this ith term-wise sequence, then that must be equal less than epsilon. Uh, i.e. you can always find an n big i for whatever epsilon. Now, what does it mean? Uh, so that's true for any, for any, um, for all of these term-wise sequences, you can do that. You can find a big N i. For whatever epsilon I give you, you can find a big N i. The crux to this, the crux of why this doesn't converge, in, doesn't necessarily converge in d infinity, is that these N i's are all get, could all be different. I.e. the first one could be 100, the second one could be 200, the third one could be 4 million, the fourth one could be 8 million, i.e. they could go off. As you go along, they could go off arbitrarily far, they could go off to infinity, they could be divergent. And that's going to be the crux of this all. Uh, right, so, what we want to prove, what we try, what we would love is for this sequence L to actually be the limit in d infinity, and what we're going to show is that unfortunately it's not always going to be that like that's not necessarily the case. Okay, so what would it mean for this to be the limit in d infinity? Well, let's re re let's recall what it means for this sequence of sequences to converge to a limit in d infinity. It means that for all epsilon greater than zero, there should exist some let's say big N which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance between the sequence Sn and the distance L is le uh, and the sequence L, sorry, which is this sequence here. So the distance between any sequence S little n, which is beyond or equal to S big N, um, needs to be less than epsilon, basically. So there should exist a point, a sequence, in this sequence of sequences, such that if you go beyond that sequence, uh, then the distance of that sequence to the limit is less than epsilon. Basically, what we're going to show is that that you can't, uh, this, you can't, uh, from what we've got, from this term-wise convergence, which is this thing here, uh, you can't get this, necessarily. Right, okay, so let's just fill in with what the distance between a sequence Sn and L is, so we'll, re we'll substitute in with what this actually is. So, remember, this is the, uh, the definition of distance on the, the d-infinity distance, so I'll put d-infinity there, is the supremum as, let's say, as i is an element of the natural numbers, over all i is an element of the natural numbers, of x n i minus l i, i.e. what you do is hit, I'll draw it out down here, let's say, or can I draw it down there, it'll make a mess if I draw it there, in fact I'll draw it a little bit here, yes, we'll draw it up here, because the picture's excellent up here. Right, so this is the, um, this is the 
these are the terms of this sequence SN. So we have XN1, so the superscript again denotes that it's the part of the nth sequence, and this uh, subscript denotes which term it is of the nth sequence. So then we have XN2, XN3, etc. And I won't draw any more terms because I don't want to go through this stuff here. Right, so basically, if you pick any little n beyond this big n, whatever sequence you go to, uh, and you take the supremum over all terms in the sequence of the distance of the modulus of that term minus its corresponding term in this sequence, that should be less than epsilon. So basically, what I should be able to do is I should be able to find you a point in this uh, sequence of sequences such that if you take any sequence beyond here, in fact, if you take and you take any term of any sequence beyond here and ask how far away is it from its uh, corresponding term in the limiting sequence, in the sequence that we are supposing is the limit of this sequence of sequences, then that should be less than epsilon. So basically, for all little n is greater than or equal to big N, and for all i is an element of the natural numbers, the modulus of xni minus li should be less than epsilon. So basically, there are absolutely loads of terms underneath these line, underneath this line that I've drawn here. So all the terms corresponding to any sequence that is beyond S big N, if I take the distance between that term, so let's say I pick an arbitrary term over here, and I take the distance between its corresponding term, so I have to pick the term, you know, that is below it, the same, t uh, the, its corresponding term in this uh, sequence which I'm supposing is the limit. If I take the modulus of the difference between them, that has to be less than epsilon. And I can pick any term here and take its corresponding term. So for absolutely every single term in this great big rectangle here, which will span infinitely downwards and infinitely this way as well, if I take that term and ask how far away is it from its corresponding term in this limit, that has to be less than epsilon, basically. And that cannot happen, basically, because what I've shown you here is, okay, uh, we can find, I can basically find a point, n big I, for each of these sequences. So for each of these term-wise sequences, I can find you a point, uh, let's say, um, and the picture's starting to get really crumpy, uh, cr uh, crowded now, but let's say here we have the I uh, term-wise uh, sequence here. And basically what I've showed instead is that I can find you some term in this sequence, so xn big I uh, of, of this sequence here, of this term y sequence, such that yes, after this line here, all of those terms, all of those terms in this term y sequence are within epsilon. The modulus of that any term down here, of this little rectangle here basically, um, is going the modulus of any term in there minus its corresponding term in the limit is going to be less than epsilon. But the problem is, I cannot find your rectangle like this. I can do this for abs absolutely every single term, but all of them are going to have a different ni. So if I go to ni plus 1, it's going to be different. It's going to have a different level. And I can never find you a line uh, which is assured to have all of these uh, all of these beyond, uh, you know, it's, I can't, uh, what I would like to do, you know, is take a line that's beyond all of these, all of these steps, i.e. beyond, I would need to make this line greater than ni for all i, basically, is an element of the natural numbers, and this isn't necessarily bounded, it could be a divergent set of numbers, so I might have to make this infinitely far down, basically, and that's no good whatsoever. If it does so happen that the, this uh, set of ni's is bounded, then fantastic. Yes, you can do this. You can just take the maximum of them all, or take the supremum, obviously, because it's an infinite set, so it might not have a maximum. But take the supremum and take any number bigger than that, and yes, I can push this line down further enough, and then it will be true that if I take any sequ any term underneath this line in this great big rectangle, and take its mod the modulus of its difference between its corresponding term in this limiting sequence, then that will be less than epsilon. But it's not the case in arbitrary pointwise convergence, basically. So I just want to repeat that argument again. Okay, because I, I because it is a difficult argument. So all of these, um, all of these, you have all of these termwise limits. So you have all of these are converging to these points, pointwise. So all of these, 
sequences of the terms, of a constant term, are converging to this limit down here. But what we need to prove in order to prove that this sequence of sequences converges to this in the d-infinity metric is we need to find some point, s big, uh, some point here, some line here, which starts at the sequence s big n, such that if I take any, whatever, whatever term you like that is within this rectangle, basically, that is below this line, and take its difference from its uh, corresponding term in this limiting sequence here, that needs to be less than epsilon. That is the definition of, that's what this definition here implies, that that needs to be the case. I cannot necessarily do that. The reason is, for each of these term-wise sequences, I can find you some big Ni. So for the ith term-wise sequence, I can find you some big Ni, such that if you are beyond that point, and you are in the uh, rectangle specifically corresponding to that term by sequence. So for instance, if you're in this rectangle here, then all of those terms beyond this x n big i, uh, they will all uh, be within an epsilon distance of their corresponding term down here. But basically, if I go along for each of the term y sequence and do this, the here, let's say this is n big 1, then we've got n big 2 down here, they might all be different numbers. So as I say, n big 1 could be 100, n big 2 could be 400, n big 3 could be uh, 500. So what do I make this big n such that it's going to be, it's got to be greater than all of those because you have to get beyond n1 in order to assure that all of the terms underneath here, in this, in this column here, are within epsilon of their corresponding sequence. You have to get beyond big N2 to make sure that all of the terms underneath big N2 are um, within epsilon of their corresponding point in this sequence down here. And you have to go beyond all of the big Ni's. So basically, big N has to be greater than Ni for all i is an element of the natural numbers, uh, because it's only once you get to big N i that you can assure that all of the points uh, underneath big N i are within an epsilon distance of their corresponding term in the sequence. But this set, this set of N i's might not be bounded. As I say, M1 could be 100, N2 could be 400, M3 could be 3 billion, N4 could be whatever comes after that, 10 billion, let's say. Uh, then you could go on to the trillions, and it could be totally unbounded. So these could just get arbitrarily big as you make i bigger. For any i, if you give me i is equal to 100, yes, it will, n big i will be a f n... Sorry, n, big N 100 will be a finite number, but the set of all of them isn't necessarily bounded. So you can't necessarily find some big N that is greater than uh, the set containing, uh, is greater than all of the N i's for all i's a natural number. And that's the problem, that I cannot necessarily find this line uh, beyond which all of the terms are um are closer than epsilon to their corresponding term in um, the sequence. And that's because pointwise convergence just tells you that this column will be cl uh, as close as you like to this one after some point, but it doesn't tell you that all of them will be arbitrarily close to their their uh, corresponding term after some point, uh, because they're all, they've all got their own separate points, and their separate points aren't necessarily bounded, basically. So you can't necessarily find one number that will be, that will be greater than all of their separate uh, points, basically. So that is why, um, why, if you have a sequence of sequences which does have a point-wise limit, it is not necessary that this sequence of sequences actually converges in the d-infinity metric space. Um, and it, uh, uh, But if it does converge in the d-infinity metric space, it will always converge to its point-wise limit. So that is a good, that's a good thing to know, that basically if a sequence converges in here, we know what it converges to. We can just find its pointwise limit. So that's a good way of calculating. Uh, if, if we know we have a sequence of sequences which does converge in this metric space, then that's a good way of actually calculating what it is.